Hi guys and welcome to Total Technic bringing you another video for the Audi Q7 this is for the 4L model and this is for the 3 litre uh, V6 TFSI engine and in this video today what we're going to be doing is a full spark plug change so let's get it started so let's have a quick look in the uh, engine bay here and let's see what we're facing so we can see on the uh, on the one side we've got a nice uh, open uh, space there really really good access that, that side's going to be by far the easier of the two sides but when we then come over to the uh, opposite side of the car just in here we can see that the access is much more limited on this side and of course we've got this uh, big air hose uh, across the back and that, that's going to need to be uh, disconnected uh, to help uh, provide a little bit more access so it's going to be a little bit more tricky uh, on that side but we're going to uh, show you how to do both sides uh, i'm going to show you the complete job uh, what we're going to do is going to start on the nice easy side to begin with now when you're disconnecting these what you don't want to do is disconnect the first one and push it down all of the way because what that will do is it will put pressure either here or here on this you can actually break these uh, plastic casings uh, very very easily and um, these ones are quite chunky they're a lot chunkier uh, now than they used to be they used to be a bit skinnier and they always used to break uh, but what you don't want to do is just push that push it all the way down whilst these two are still connected because obviously all you're going it won't be able to move anywhere so all you're going to do is put pressure on it and it will snap so just be careful as you go we're going to release it uh, move it down a little bit and then work our way along to release all three evenly so we don't break any of this rail so what you want to do is just push this tab down and uh, before you try and release it it's always a good idea to push it forward uh, so if there's any kind of um, scum or dirt that's built up in there pushing it forward and then pulling it back can often release it so just pull that down nice and gently push it up and push it down there it goes so it's just started to come off now like I said I don't want to uh, push it off completely so I've just made a little bit of a gap so now we're going to repeat that process and then we'll come back to this one and just do the whole thing uh, one by one uh, so that all three of these will go down together So we have all three disconnected now let's just push them off nice and evenly and just pop that out of the way okay so next we're going to uh, remove the uh, coil pack uh, there is a specific tool that you can get for doing this uh, which kind of slides on grabs the uh, grabs either side and you can just kind of give it a, a bit of a pull and a wobble quite tight these ones there. and pop it out like so uh, so you can get you can get these on places like uh, eBay and uh, Amazon uh, however they're not essential uh, I'll pop that back in a second you can actually usually do it like I said they, they can be quite tight if you do it with your hands you will kind of get it eventually it just can be a bit fiddly Uh, so obviously you're not not you're unlikely to have that uh, specialist tool uh, but you can do it quite easily with your fingers just trying to get them under the edge and again when you're lifting things from the edge don't lift it right close to the edge try and get your fingers as far underneath as you as you can uh, so that is the uh, the coil pack removed so next you want to go into your socket set and pull out your uh, spark plug socket uh, size 16 uh, these are a little bit different to uh, standard sockets they have a little uh, rubber boot down inside them there and what that boot does is actually uh, grips the head of the uh, spark plug so you put it in there and it stops the spark plug being able to uh, being able to fall out uh, all generic um, kind of uh, socket sets tend to come with these in a couple of sizes and it's the 16 mil one we're going to be using now you're going to be wanting to use uh, an extension uh, bar to put this on the end and a quick note uh, as well as if uh, if you're doing this job in the future quite a handy tool to uh, get yourself with these little uh, locking extensions because uh, what can happen very often when you're doing the, uh, the spark plugs 
because the uh, spark plug gets uh, stuck in there because that little rubber boot sometimes you come to pull it out at the end of the job and this will actually just separate from this this stays down and then you've kind of the key the key to it is you can get it out with a normal one you have to kind of push it in and then try and pull it to one pull it over to one side to create a leverage in the hole and then pull it straight up these locking ones are great because obviously that will lock that on that will stop that coming off uh, so these are worth getting um, if you're doing this job in the future so as you can see I've gone ahead and removed uh, all three of the coil packs here uh, very important when you do this ideally you want to keep your coil packs in the same order when you uh, come to put them back in so when you remove the first second and third put them in the same order on top of the engine wherever or wherever it is you're going to store them temporarily so I know that this first one is this one the second one is this one the third one is this one so you always want to try and keep those coil packs in the same order so they go back into the same holes that they came out of and next whilst you're here it's always a good idea to uh, grab your torch shine it down the hole and have a little look at the general condition down in there see if there's anything uh, untoward and just check each of those and make sure that you're uh, you're happy there's nothing uh, weird going on down there and they look nice and clean and dry so next this is a, a step that's often uh, overlooked uh, it's always a good idea especially if you have an air compressor I'm going to blow some uh, compressed air uh, down into these holes just so that you know, if there's any little bits of dirt or debris in there uh, what we don't want to do is remove the spark plug and have that fall into the open hole so if you give that a quick blast of air it should throw out any little uh, kind of crumbs bits of dirt anything that's down uh, in there as well uh, if you don't have a, an air compressor uh, you can do it with the uh, the spray uh, aerosols you know the compressed air aerosols however they do because they kind of run cold they can uh, create uh, condensation you don't be uh, blowing um, kind of effectively water down into there so if you don't have um, a compressed air uh, air compressor then you can just literally blow you know reach down there and just blow into it uh, manually uh, but you do want to give those a quick blow as a part of the, uh, the process if you can So next, put our socket down on the first plug to be removed. Push it down, give it a bit of a twist, make sure it's seated properly. And once that feels good, grab your wrench and attach it. Just get it to a point where you can twist it by hand. It's always a good idea yeah you can see these have uh, got quite a bit of wear these obviously haven't been done for a fair while looking a bit grubby but it's always a good idea to uh, inspect your uh, spark plugs uh, because this gives you a kind of a, an idea especially if you've been having any kind of issues uh, this can point you in the um, uh, the direction of uh, uh, possible uh, solutions for your problems so always well worth having a quick look at all of these and uh, comparing them as well so when you take the next one out is the wear even to this one or if you've got one cylinder that's um, wearing really badly all that kind of stuff can be quite useful so again when you take these out lay these out so you know uh, which uh, cylinder it came from and hopefully you'll have even wear across all six so before you fit your new spark plug you need to ensure that the gap is set correctly and uh, the best way to do that is use one of these uh, these really really inexpensive little um, disc tools uh, to gap the spark plugs you can get these on uh, Amazon, eBay, they're really really cheap we'll put some links for you uh, to uh, Amazon uh, in the descriptive text below uh, so if you need to pick one of these up uh, cheaply you can do uh, now the importance of this, these, these gaps always have to be set to the correct uh, specification for the car. Now I'm using these platinum plugs which are auto light, uh, part number AP3924. And I know, because I've looked it up on their website, that these come uh, uh, gapped at uh, 0 0.044 inches however the correct specification for this 3 litre v6 engine is 0 0.032 inches so i know that i'm going to have to reduce this uh, this gap here uh, and that uh, 0 0.032 inches uh, for reference is 0.8 uh, millimeters 
so I'm definitely going to have to um, uh, adjust these. Uh, we've done a dedicated video on uh, how to um, gap your spark plugs properly using this little tool. So I'll add a link for you in the descriptive text below. Um, so you can check that out if you need to. Very often the uh, spark plugs will come uh, pre-gapped. Or if you've got uh, spark plugs that come with multiple arms, often they won't need gapping. But if it's a single arm, kind of standard type of spark plug such as this, then absolutely uh, it should definitely uh, be gapped. And even if they do come pre-gapped, it's always a good idea just to double check that they are what they say that they are but make sure you do that it's essential for the uh, the correct timing on your vehicle so I've manually gapped my spark plug to the correct setting 0 0.032 inches place that into the tool and when you come to uh, put this in uh, never do it with the wrench attached always do it by hand just gently drop that down in and always get it started by hand and feel for it to feel that it's taking the thread correctly. If you go and stick a, a wrench on the end of this and immediately start cranking on it, you can easily cross thread down at the bottom and obviously that's something that we do not want to happen. So you always want to get them seated by hand, make sure it feels right and it feels good and you can feel it screwing in and then once you, once you can kind of feel that you know that it's definitely in the thread and you know you're safe to, uh, to, uh, to do it with the, uh, with the wrench. So just get that as tight as you can by hand. Now I'm just going to put my wrench on there. Okay, so there's not much there, so now he's tightened up. And um, now we need a torque wrench because we're going to torque this up to a specific specification. So now we need to grab our uh, torque wrench and we're setting this up to 30 newton meters, which is the correct specification uh, for this uh, particular engine. So we lock that in 30 newton meters. Now if you need any help on how to set up a torque wrench, again, we've done a dedicated video on that. We'll have a link for you uh, below so you can check that out if you need to. So lock that off, 30 newton meters. So there we go, the uh, um, torque wrench has just clicked, so that illustrates that we've hit our point of 30 newton meters. So just remove your uh, torque wrench and then pull up your uh, your socket. If you don't have these uh, locking ones, uh, like I mentioned before, if that gets stuck down on the end of the um, of the spark plug, what you can do is uh, put the end, you'd have a non-locking version, put it back in and then what you, try and actually pull it slightly to the side and then pull it straight out. So rather than just pulling it straight out because you're just going to have the same effect every time, push it in, pull it to one side as tight as you can then pull up. What that will do is that will increase the uh, grip inside here and so if you do have one that gets stuck in that's often the kind of easiest way of, uh, of getting it out. So now you can just go ahead and repeat exactly the same process on the uh, next two spark plugs, so have all three of these uh, replaced. So next we're going to put the uh, coil packs uh, back in. So let's, so let's fit it onto the uh, head of the spark plug, push it down like so. sure that they're properly seated all the way down. You do this by hand. You shouldn't use a tool for this this part, but you want to make sure that they're definitely fully seated all the way down. Those look good. And then we can reapply our rail. Again, be gentle with it. Line up all three before you start pushing any on. Make sure that all three are sliding on. And just get it to move up evenly. the click. 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 So what we need to do is pop back in these two little torque screws. So there is a factory torque spec on these screws which is five newton meters which is virtually nothing. So just uh, tighten it but don't over tighten it. There. 
So as we can see, we've now finished on the, uh, the nice easy side. So, so that's the exact same process that we need to repeat on the opposite side. Uh, just on the opposite side, we know we're going to have a much more limited access. So it's going to be a little bit of a harder job, but the process is identical to what we've just done. So let's start by removing the uh, little engine cap at the back here. Just pull it up from either side, lift it out and put that to one side. So to help us gain more access, what we want to do is actually remove this uh, this air pipe uh, completely, get it out of the way, uh, so we've got access below. Uh, so we're going to follow through a quick uh, process to get this removed correctly. So on the back here, you've got a little uh, vacuum hose. You can just see the top of it here. And if you look in the mirror, hopefully you guys can see in there, uh, all you do is you literally pull off this lower hose. So just grab it, give it a bit of a wobble. And that's the uh, hose just there that you're looking just to disconnect. So next we've got these large uh, banded clips here. So you want to start uh, slacking in these off. I think the ones on this particular vehicle we're working on are non-genuine. Certainly appear that way. Uh, not that that matters, the uh, principle is exactly the same. Just loosen that off and move it out of the way and then uh, we'll do the same on the second one just here. Now just grab the whole hose, move it side to side, pop it off at this end and then repeat the process uh, carefully down at this end. And as you can see that whole pipe is now completely free from the car and can be removed. Uh, also, you've got this uh, hose that runs straight across the top. We'll just carefully pop that out and that will help give you a little bit more space there as well. So if you look down at the front uh, of your airbox here, you've got an airline coming into the bottom. Squeeze those two tabs together. And wobble the whole thing and it'll come off like so. Next, you've got this little uh, hose that runs across the top. It's got a little uh, rubber lug that sits in there. And then finally at the back here, you have this little uh, plastic uh, line that's built into the airbox itself. You see this one's just got a cap in the end of it. That's because this car doesn't have uh, air suspension. If your car has air suspension, you'll have a hose uh, on the end of that. And to release that hose, it has uh, like a, a release ring that you have to pull back and that's on uh, that end, um, the bulkhead end, you actually have to squeeze the ring in and then slide the whole thing uh, off of the uh, off of the line there as well. So that's if you do have the uh, the air suspension. So with those disconnected, just open up the air box and give them a gentle lift upwards. It has uh, little uh, plastic tabs and they sit obviously into little slots uh, down at the uh, at the bottom just past the air filter there. So going to carefully remove this air filter, this one's brand new. And I'm just going to put all of that assembly to one side out of the way. So as we can see we've got all the access that we need now. It doesn't say to do that in the uh, in the workshop manual for Audi, which surprises me because the amount of time that it saves, you know, if you've got something that's very tight on space, you can be there for uh, hours messing around with it. Uh, so it's worth spending, you know, that extra two or three minutes just to remove that to give yourself the extra space you need. So there we have it, guys. Uh, as you can see, you can just carry on now and you can change those spark plugs and get that reassembled uh, as you need to. Uh, that's by far the easiest way of doing it. Like I said, that the Audi workshop manual doesn't do it that way. Uh, I don't know why, because that's by far the easiest way to do it. Uh, if you're unsure how to put the... Um, uh, the airbox assembly with the air filter back together. We've recorded a, a dedicated video for the air filter change, so we'll be sure to add a link for you in the descriptive text below, just in case you any, need any assistance putting that back into situ properly. Uh, as we always say, guys, if this video has been helpful for you, quick favor in return, can you please be sure to hit that like button? And also, if you could subscribe, it really does help out our channel. We have hundreds more uh, Audi DIY instructional videos on our YouTube channel and our website, totaltechnic.com. Be sure to have a look at those as well. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again.